guys, welcome to Storytime to Go. I'm Andrea from the Mount Vernon City Library, but as you can see, I am not at the library today. I am at the Lincoln Theater, and this is an awesome place to come and see movies and plays and hear musicians. And today, we are going to read a story about a really famous musician, and her name is Selena Quintanilla, and the name of the story is Sing With Me, the story of Selena Quintanilla. Selena Quintanilla rolled a tortilla and lifted it to her mouth, only to use it as a microphone. She turned everything into a microphone, spoons, crayons, toothbrushes, but instead of scolding her, her parents hummed along while her brother and sister tapped their feet. The Quintanillas were always together, siempre juntos, and they were always united by music. One day, her father announced, we should start a band. Selena jumped up and down. What a great idea. Selena and her family began rehearsing their favorite pop, rock, and country songs at their home in Lake Jackson, Texas. Selena sang while her brother, A.B., plucked a bass guitar and her sister, Suzette, tapped the drums. When Selena was nine, her father set up a stage in Papagayos, their family restaurant. Papel picado hung from the ceiling and the scent of caldo and charro beans filled the air. No one could miss the giant banner with the band's new name, Selena y los Dinos. At first, Selena felt nervous about singing for strangers, but as soon as she stepped on stage, she realized quickly music turned strangers into friends. When she sang Feliz Cumpleaños to customers celebrating their birthday, she said, sing with me. The waiters, cooks, and customers joined her, their voices united by song. Whether the restaurant was almost empty or so full that people had to wait for seats, Selena always sang her best. Then the recession of the early 1980s hit and no one had money to eat at Papagayos. Soon the Quintanillas lost their restaurant and their home. Selena was 10 when they drove three hours south to Corpus Christi where they would stay with relatives until they could support themselves again. What will this new city be like, Selena wondered. She opened the window, tasting the salty air from the Gulf of Mexico. As they crossed the harbor bridge, Selena began to sing. A.B. and Suzette didn't have their in instruments, but they clapped out the rhythms. Then their mother let loose a most glorious grito and their father cheered, Orale! They used their last dollars to buy a bus which they named Big Bertha, and they drove to Houston, Laredo, McAllen, Falfurias, Del Rio, and Freer to perform. They sang at weddings, quinceañeras, and rodeos, sometimes for as little as $100. Times were tough, but at least they were together. While they traveled through Texas, the audiences made requests. Selena loved to sing their favorites, but when they asked for Tejano songs, she found herself apologizing because she couldn't speak Spanish. Why didn't you teach me? Selena asked her parents. They were quiet for a moment. Then her father said, when we were growing up, we got punished if we spoke Spanish in school. That's why we taught you only English. At the time, it was the language of schooling and success. Selena understood that her parents thought they were helping her, but she really wanted this connection with her audience. I'm going to learn Spanish, she decided, so more people can sing along. At first, Selena learned the songs phonetically, sounding out the words, roll your R's and remember the H is silent she kept reminding herself. 
After she learned a few songs in Spanish, her family booked a gig at a Tejano music festival. Selena loved the other musicians, bolo ties, cowboy hats, and Western boots. She was so excited to join them. But even though she said, hola, with, with a silent H, they waved her off. No room for girls in the Tejano music world, they told her. For a tiny moment, Selena wanted to give up. But then she heard the music and the footbeats of dancing couples. It's up to me, she realized. I have to make room. The main stage was for popular bands, so she went to the side stage to perform. She put her heart and soul into, and soul into each Tejano song. Even when she didn't understand all the Spanish words she was saying, when she finished, she said, muchas gracias. And the audience cheered. At 12, she recorded her first song, Se Acabó Aquel Amor. In a room by herself, Selena missed the company of a band and audience. How could she sing without people to dance and hum along? She closed her eyes, tried to put feeling into the music. She repeated the Spanish pronunciation to herself and, forced, or, and focused on the song's meaning but singing in a studio was much different than in front of a live audience. Then she remembered all the mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, and abuelos who went to her concert. She wasn't singing for the producers behind the window. She was singing for family and friends. Canta conmigo, she silently repeated, imagining the day when they'd all hear her recording and sing along. Soon, Selena recorded more songs, many written by Abe, who mixed rock, country, and pop for their unique Tejano sound. Suzette kept playing the drums, and between gigs, she and Selena studied fashion magazines, designing new clothes, trying different hairstyles. Selena didn't buy her stage outfits. She made them all with her mother and sister's help. Meanwhile, Big Bertha took them to stages around the U.S. and Mexico. Crowds of 20 turned to crowds of hundreds. On the road, Selena kept studying Spanish. The words like secret code she unlocked one by one. Most of the time, she still thought in English, but sometimes the Spanish words came first. In 1986, when Selena was only 15 years old, she won a Tejano Music Award. She won the award again in 1987, then the next year and the next. Every time she accepted a trophy, she remembered all the people she had met through her music and her family, the Quintanillas, who were always by her side. She kept recording, performing, and sewing. She opened fashion boutiques to sell her clothes. She fell in love and got married. On February 26, 1995, at the Astrodome in Houston, Selena circled the arena on a horse-drawn carriage. She wore her own purple pantsuit that she designed. As she waved to the crowd, she thought of her performances at the family dining table at Papagayo's at the dance halls and rodeos. How different from the Astrodome, and yet, how much the same. Her fans cheered when she hopped on the stage. More than 60,000 had gotten tickets to that show. Bitty bitty bum bum, Selena sang, and then she held the mic to the crowd. Bitty bitty bum bum, they repeated. Thousands of families and friends, their heartbeats and their voices, united by her song. That concert ended many years ago, but her fans are still singing. Every time they hear her voice, they also hear her joyfully shouting, Canta conmigo. All right, and that is the end of the story today. Thank you so much for joining me. And remember, you can always find more story times on the go on the library's YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.